from the morning time uh, since yesterday. I was keep on thinking that what message will be I must live in the Philippines. Um, and I want to show you some what's going on now. And <coughs> surely what I want from you having decision that you will follow the Jesus. If we don't follow Jesus, and if we don't live accordance of His willing, and His words, and His commands, we are sinner, but we have no more hope in that case. But even we are sinner, if we follow Jesus, and believe that Jesus died for us, then I'm sure we can come to him and stay with him and forever and ever. The world is get crazy. The people deny about the God. They don't want to listen about the words of God anymore. It's kind of a very big miracle. If not Holy Spirit work in the heart of Bill, surely Bill will not accept the Jesus. Same as you are. If Holy Spirit didn't work in the heart of Jen, Risa, Kelly, even Evelyn, and Novi, or Zodimar, I'm sure that no one will accept the Jesus Christ. Do not worry. Do not worry. We always say that I'm somewhat weak. I'm somewhat lacking. Richard, isn't it? And we always feeling that I'm not perfect. Yes, we are not perfect. God knows that 100% you are not perfect. So he is ready and he actually made a way for the people who is not perfect, who is weak, to be saved. What we need to do is we need to listen from him. Not just to listen and let it go, but listen and keep in our heart. During the time of Jerusalem, before Jerusalem fall, God is speaking like this, and the people answering like this. Can you read it together? Also, I sent watchmen over you, saying, listen to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not listen. Therefore, hear you nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. God is saying that you must listen. <coughs> And they said, I will not listen. God is saying that there is a watchman. They will be blow the trumpet. And you hear the sound of the trumpet. And you must know now what will be happening. And they said, what? We will not listen to the trumpet. Do we have a watchman too? Yes. We have a watchman. Many pastors. And many servants of God. They keep on saying that something is happening. We must watch. When Jerusalem fall before, God is keep on warning them with the prophet and the leaders of spiritual leaders. But they rejected. And they keep on killing the prophet. And they even killed the Jesus Christ. And Jesus got so tired, but the sympathy on the Jerusalem people. Jesus himself is speaking to the people like this. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings but you were not willing. No matter how many times God sent the prophet and give them warning, you know what? Now it is a time we need to repent. Now it is a time that you need to come back to me. And he tried to get all the people under his wing. But when they reject and when they don't listen, God, he cannot do anything to the people who against his words. 
if I check the words, before the judgment, God tried to let them know that there will be a judgment. And God is a keep on sending the messenger that let them understand what will be happen. But most of the people, they will listen or not. They don't listen. They don't listen. Before the flood of Noah, Noah's flood, many people, not many people, most of the people mocking and laughing at Noah when Noah said there will be a judgment. When Noah said there will be a flood, when Noah said there will be a rain, the people mocking and laughing at Noah. And what happened? When they don't listen, they die all. Before Jesus comes, Jesus speaks, same things will happen in the world. The people will not listen. Can you read it? But as the days of Noah were, also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the son of man be. Yes. They saw the sign. When many animals is coming to the ark, they were amazed. Wow. <clears throat> this could be happen. We cannot explain. But anyway, it was happened. But they didn't listen from the Noah. Instead, they listened to the Noah, they laughing at Noah. When Noah's family really came into the ark, and when the door closed, still, they didn't knock the door, or they didn't try to come in to the ark. Why? Because for their idea, there is a way to survive for them, I'm sure. They also prepare some way. Some people might made some small boat. Some people, they made something else that they can be protected. Some people design their house so that the water will not come in because they are smart. But they refused to come in to the ark. Ellen G. White is a warning for the last day's message. Most non-Adventists will reject the warning. Adventists, you and I, must warning to the people of the world that the end come. And she is saying that most of the Adventists will not reject the message. Many who hear the message, by far the greatest number, will not credit the solemn warning. Many will be found disloyal to the commandments of God, which are the test of character. The Lord's servant will be called, what? Can you read it? Enthusiast. Yes. They will be called like a crazy trust people. A minister will warn the people not to listen to them. So many ministers in other church, they will say that do not listen to Seventh-day Adventists. Do not listen to them. No one received the same treatment while the Spirit of God was urging him to give the message. So when Noah is speaking to the people that the end will come, the rain will come, this world will be over, they treated him enthusiast. You understand what that word? The person who trust too much and the people act too much and they were thinking that he is over trusting the God whether men would hear or whether they wouldn't forbear sure the flood came I show you some picture the video that we know that what happened in the Hawaii, before fire, after fire. And the one man is saying that 
it was like the end of the world. So this is a before <coughs> the fire. Before, after. Before, after. Before and after. Oh my gosh, look at the hunter. Oh my god. The eighty percent is Lahaina was gone. The so people jump into the water just to be safe. This is the most horrific fires we have seen. We've seen wildfires, but never in this degree of devastation and impact, you know, to life. We just had the worst disaster I've ever seen. The whole line is burnt to a crisp. It's like a apocalypse. No cell phone coverage, no internet, no way to contact the outside world. Do you think they are expecting those kind of disaster? They said for 100 years of history in the United States, there was no fire like this. Is that true, Bill? More than 100 people die in just one day with a fire. There's a man who coming out from the car and run to the sea. And he said, I lived. I was survived. He was floating on the sea for eight hours. But when he go back to the car, his two friends and the two dogs died inside the car. You know, this is happening in the U.S. I really cannot believe. But we understand that how many disasters is keep on coming to us without stopping. After this, the other event. After this, the other event. And actually, these things are already spoken to the prophet that it will be occur when? The time when Jesus is coming. Just before Jesus comes, these things will be more frequently happen. The fire man cannot stop will be occur here and there. Yes. The people of the world is speaking this way. And listen properly what they are speaking. And what is the reason this is happening? They saw the way like this. Climate change is here, it is terrifying, and it is just the beginning. The era of global warming has ended, the era, the era of global boiling has arrived. The air is unbreathable, the heat is unbearable, and the level of fossil fuel profits and climate inaction is unacceptable. No more greenwashing, no more deception, and no more abusive distortion of antitrust laws to sabotage net zero alliances. Many countries in the Northern Hemisphere are now experiencing extreme heat, driven by the El Nino weather pattern and climate change. Two weeks ago, we saw the hottest day on record. Extreme heat takes the greatest toll on those least able to manage its consequences, such as older people, infants and children, and the poor and homeless. It also puts increased pressure on health systems. The first week of July, starting from 4th to 7th, uh, could be considered as the warmest uh, period or the warmest uh, week uh, ever recorded. It really is completely unprecedented with this kind of reduction in sea ice that we've seen around the Antarctic. The Antarctic region is normally thought of being relatively stable. It's much colder than the Arctic. We're used to seeing you know, these big reductions in sea ice 
in the Anta in the Arctic, but not in the Antarctic. My certain likelihood that one of the next five years will be the warmest on record, and a sixty-six percent chance, so more likely than not. If you listen from them, what do you feel? Do you give them trust? Yes, I agree that what is going on. And they are saying that the region is a climate change. And the climate change region is what? What is the region of the climate change? What they are saying? Because we are using, we need to reduce. Yes, carbon emission, we need to decrease it. So when those people, about top of the world people saying that, and there's one man coming out and speaking like this so soon. Temporarily exceeding the 1.5 degree of pre-industrial for at least one of the five years. Yes, I agree. But the rapidly changing climate of the world and the constant happening here and there are signs that Jesus is coming soon to this earth. No matter how much we reduce carbon, no matter what we do, we can never change these things that God started. The world is about to end. We must prepare for the return of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't have a time. We must forsake our sins. We need to repent and listen to the voice of Jesus Christ. It's a time. Let's come out to the Lord. Well, compared to previous people, is that man is well known? <laughs> no, isn't it? Something funny to compare, isn't it? Yes, it's just something funny that if we speak against them, when all the leader says that we need to reduce the carbon uses, what if someone says that it is a sign of the end of the world? What if someone says that we must repent? What if someone says that we must prepare the second coming of Jesus Christ? How will the world react to us? The Bible says that. Sing with a loud voice, a voice, fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. And worship Him who made heaven and the earth, the sea and spring of water. If somebody going to start to speaking like this in front of the people, what will be the reaction of the word? There will be mocking in the beginning. There will be laughing in the beginning. Later, they will say, stop, I heard enough. You stop speaking. Later, what will be happen? They will start to shut their mouth. And Jesus knows that this will be happen when the last day begun. Can you read it? Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Yes. Because when we trust God, and when we know the signs that the last day be gone, and when we understand that Jesus is coming very soon, and when we trust the words of God, and when we try to explain what's going on by the words alone, the people will kill you. So you must have the decision if you will be following him or you will not following him. The so LNG White is speaking like this about the words and digester will be increased the last days. Can you read it? The tempest is coming and we must get ready for its fury by having repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will arise to shake terribly the earth. We shall see troubles on all sides. Thousands of ships will be hurled into the depths of the sea. Navies will go down, 
and human lives will be sacrificed by millions. Fires will break out unexpectedly and no human effort will be able to quench them. The palaces of earth will be swept away into the fury of the flames. Disasters by rail will come more and more frequent. Confusion, collision, and death without a moment's warning will occur on the great lines of travel. The end is near. Probation is closing. Oh, let us seek God while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. This is what Ellen Joy is speaking. Is that happening now? Yes. Everywhere. There is a confusion. We heard about Greece, what happened in the Greece. The railroad was made on accident. That's a few months ago. Not only there, everywhere now you see, every other country they have a flood and the fire. It's keep on happening. In Spain, you know the, what's going on in Spain? Bigger forest than what happened in the States. Still ongoing. Because of forest fire in the Canada, New York City becomes so dark. That's just the last month. Was it happened before? During the time when you live in New York, was it happened before? No. Why now everything comes together? She has to keep on saying like this. Can you read it? In the last scenes of this Earth's history, war will rage. There will be pestilence, plague, and famine. The waters of the deep will overflow their boundaries. Property and life will be destroyed by fire and flood. We should be preparing for the mansions that Christ has gone to prepare for them that love him. God is the saying to the Israelite people, listen, listen. And they said they will cover their ear and they will not listen. So last day's message is a listen, listen. I tell you what will be happening in the future. You listen carefully. And this is what's going on in the world. Then no one is a saying that in the media, it seems like the sign that Jesus is coming soon. And even the church, they are being quiet, too quiet. No one is a saying that Jesus is coming soon. Why? Why this is happening? Media says that this is because of man. And because this is a global warming. If someone says that the judgment is coming and people will mocking them. When we give the news like this before, there is a two group of people comes out. Can you read it? So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mocking said, they are full of new wine. Yes. When the Peter is uh, God, Holy Spirit, and speaking about the Jesus, the people amazed. And one group of people try to know what is this mean. Whatever could this mean? What's going on? And there's a more group of people say that they are full of new wine. They are mocking and said that maybe they drunk. They are crazy. So when we speak about the words of God in the last days, that Jesus is coming, you should be prepared. And the people will say that, you know what? You know, that's enough. Enough. Stop. You are already disturbed me. You know, last day's message is really disturbing people. Why? They need to say that, repent. They must say, prepare for the judgment. Their speaking is like that. The plague is coming. They must say that you must be prepared so that you will not receive the mark of beast. All those messages is not friendly message. The message needs to have a reformation from my bottom of life. And we need to give up all the sin. So this kind of message doesn't give them any happiness. And they will say that. You stop speaking. Yes. In the last days, many people will deny for the second coming of Jesus. 
and it was written in the Bible too. Can you read it? Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? But since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Yes, when this will be happen? In the last days. And what they will say that? Where is the promise that Jesus is coming? For over 2,000 years, his promise, he didn't come. Can you? Are you sure that he didn't come yet and he will come in the future? Yes, we didn't see that Jesus is coming yet. We never saw that Jesus coming. That is the reason why we are waiting as he said he will come back. People will mocking and people will laughing on us. Then we still need to speak. The media says that we need to decrease the carbon emission. And they are saying that the responsible is into the human. Well, if the responsible is into the human, and they will charge to responsible to human. And they are going to, they are looking for the target who will carry that charge. I have a question. You know that global warming, warming is a started a long time ago, isn't it? After you know it, when you go to the office, did you walk? Did you ride a bicycle? Why not? Because it is impossible. Decreasing carbon, well, it is, it looks like good, but I heard that when they make an electric car to make a battery, it produces lots of carbon more than ordinary car. So what is that for? You think tomorrow, if global warming is much getting harder and harder and much more rain comes, then do you think you will walk or you will buy the car? What will be your choice? I'm sure I will buy a car for my family, isn't it? I don't want to let my children get wet. We should turn off the aircon. We should turn off the TV. We should turn off the refrigerator to save the earth. The people think that others should do. Isn't it? But I must not do. So do you think we can save this planet? No. The Satan will try to make people's ear close. So that last battle is like this. Either the people who listen or who is not listening and that will be separated by two groups. Can you read it? But they refused to heed, shrugged their shoulders and stopped their ears so they could not hear. Yes, they made their hearts like flint, refusing to hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent by his spirit through the former prophets. Thus great wrath came from the Lord of hosts. Yes. Only the words of God can change the people. But what is the work of Satan? Make their ear close. Refusing to hear the law, the words, and make their hearts like flint. What is a flint? Hard rock, isn't it? Make it harden. So, the Satan closed their ears. So if we don't want to listen to the words of God, and if we reject, and if we open our arms to the word, so mostly the people who do close their ear, they will close the ear again if we give last warning message. When Stephan gave the last warning message to the Israel people, we can see what the Israel people did to the Stephan. Can you read it? Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran at him with one accord. 
and they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. Yes. The people who reject the message of the Stephan, they stoned him, they killed him. So you must listen carefully now. If you don't listen now, then you will be joining with them too. And you will be closing. And if I speak that Jesus will come soon, then you are the one who is going to throw the stone to me. There is no middle ground. There is no other ground. Either we join to listen to God or we listen to the word. So we must have the decision tonight. But I believe you are here because you want to listen. Can I, can I know that way? Can I understand that way? You come here because uh, I force you to come or you want to listen the words? Yes, you must listen. Be careful. You must listen carefully. Every morning, every morning, none of you here missing the names in my prayer. And a few days ago, from a few days, I have a worry. What if I'm not here? If I'm here, sometimes I see that we're not really focusing our hearts to the Lord. Will they worship with the true and the spirit? What about the office? They will worship every morning? They will listen from the word of God. God speaking to us like this. Hear this, O oh people. Give ear. All inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together, my mouth shall speak wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall give understanding. So God says that, you know what? You don't need to be worried to understand the words. What I want from you is give me your ear. Give ear to listen to me. Because when I come in you, then I'm the one who change you. I'm the one who give you the life in your life. So just to give me ear. Give me ear. Most of you here, like a children of spiritual children of mine. Even Bill is older, still his spiritual age is young, and he still needs to learn many words of God. So he is children to me too. And sometimes the kind of stress and press that I must lead you properly, that idea squeeze me. And make me give up. But God said through the Paul, say that I understand you. So you must grow up. You must grow up. Speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is in is the head Christ. So when we had Christ. In us, we can grow up. Then how can we let the Christ in us through the ear? We must give the ear to him. And we must let his words come into me. Even the pastors speaking good. Even other speakers speak to you good. Do you think you will grow up? No. If you don't give ear, you never can grow up. Why? Because grow up is not by speaking of the pastor or the speaker. Growing the power is from the God himself. So Paul is saying like, I plant Apollo's water, but God was accusing the growth. Who accusing the growth? The God. So then neither the one who plants nor the one who water is anything, but God who accused the growth. So if you close your ear, even I speak hundred times, 
200 times, even good pastor is speaking to you, if you close your eye, if you cover your eye, we cannot go on. Because God cannot enter in you. Well, we are all sinners. Who is the sinner? The sinner is the one God died for us. Jesus died for the sinner. We need to read it together. For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for the good person, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. We must carefully see this word, because this is a define about the sinner. God is saying that for while we were still what? Helpless, helpless. Why we are helpless? At the right time, Christ died for ungodly. So ungodly is what? Helpless. And he said, but the, in that while we were still what? Sinner, Christ died for us. So meaning to say sinners and ungodly, it's the same. So when God is seeing the sinner, he sees it like a helpless and ungodly. These are the view of God. God doesn't say that a sinner, I will condemn. No, God doesn't say, think that way. God knows that, ah, oh, he is helpless. The word helpless in Greek is like this. Asthenes, which means weak, infirm, feeble. Meaning to say, it's a very weak, weak. God knows that we are weak. God see the sinner, not who carry the sin, and I want to kick them out. No. When God see the sinner, he said, ah, oh, he needs my help. He is weak. He is weak. So he needs me. So I must come into him. I must help him. Another word. It's the same word, that original word. Sometimes that word, this word, translate as a sick. You know the title of my speaking tonight? Sinner, the sick. Can you read it? He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Yes. The sick is also asthenes, which is a weak, infirm, feeble, or so sick. So sinner is a who is that? Sick person. Patient is a sinner. To the patient who needs for the patient. The patient needs doctor. doctor. If somebody can be healed by himself, he's not sick. But the one who's sick needs Jesus Christ. So Jesus knows that we are sick. He is saying that you are a sinner, but he is saying that you are helpless. You are sick, so I need to cure you so that you can be healthy. So when Jesus is having service in this earth, he gives service to the people who seek most. And people helpless. They don't have money. To, they cannot go to the doctor. And they came to Jesus. And whoever comes to Jesus, they were healed. Well, the people, problem, they do not know they are sick. They do not think that, they do not know that they need a Jesus. They do not believe that they need a helper. And we say that, I'm okay. I'm okay like this. Sometimes even I say that, I'm okay like this. Lord, do not disturb. I'm okay like this. Many times I say that. But I found myself that, without Jesus, I'm nothing. 
Yes. In the last day, it was a prophesied like this. But I hope you and I will not be included here. Can you read it? Oh Lord, I not your eyes on the truth. You have stricken them, but they have not grieved. You have consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than rock. They have refused to return. Therefore I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish, for they do not know the way of the Lord, the judgment of their God. Yes. We know with the signs of the word that Jesus is coming. And he is speaking to you. Why are you foolish? Why are you not listening? Why are you making your heart like a rock? Like a rock. Why don't you give an ear? The people, number is not important. We must remember when Jesus was here. Whoever knows that I'm sick and come to Jesus, everybody got healed. The Bible described like that. And as many as touched it were made perfectly well. Jesus didn't refuse any sinner, any weak, any sick person. Whoever come to Jesus, he gave them the perfect wellness. Paul is speaking to the Philippians, and I speaking to the Philippians. Also, there is American. And he's speaking before he leaves the place like this. Can you read it? Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in his my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yes. I'm leaving for two months, more than two months actually. But I hope, even I'm not here, I will pray and I will be with you my prayer. And I know that God will be with you. You have a confidence and work out your own salvation. I don't want to leave sometimes. Because I worry about you. But what shall I do? I should be with my family too, isn't it? I hope tonight you can have decision that I will open my eyes to the words of God and set up your time to read the Bible so that He can come into your heart and he can help your sickness because we are sick and we all need a Jesus. Let's pray.